In this lecture, you'll learn what on-tap snapshots are and how they work. A snapshot copy is a read-only, point-in-time image of the active file system. Throughout this section, I'll call the active file system the AFS. It's a lot quicker to say AFS than active file system. And what the active file system is, is whatever files and folders, so the directory structure of a volume right now. So you've got your volume, whatever files and folders are active in it right now, that is the active file system. Snapshots are used for very fast and very convenient short-term backups. Individual files, folders, or the entire volume can be quickly and conveniently restored by the storage administrator, that's you, or by end users if you enable the option to allow them to do that. They are configured and maintained at the volume level, and different volumes can have different snapshot settings, for example, how often we take a snapshot. So for our day-to-day -day running of the system, our snapshots are going to be managed at the volume level, but aggregate level snapshots are also supported. These are required for SyncMirror and Metro Cluster that you'll learn about in the data protection section, and they can be used by NetApp technical support to restore data if the aggregate file system becomes inconsistent. So highly unlikely that that would ever happen, but if it does, it's possible for technical support to possibly restore that from an aggregate level snapshot. So the aggregate level snapshots are there and supported, but when we're talking about snapshots in general and when you're configuring and using them, it's gonna be volume level snapshots. When the snapshot is taken, it does not back up the data by copying it to new blocks on disk. So it doesn't take up double the amount of blocks. The way it does work is it consists of pointers to the blocks on disk that were in the volume at the time that the snapshot was taken. And later in this lecture, I'm going to walk step by step through how the snapshot actually is taken and how it works. So because it's not copying data to new blocks on disk, it's just taking a pointer of there. The snapshot is nearly instantaneous because it's not taking time to actually copy it and move it into a new location. So it's nearly instantaneous, and also it does not initially take up any space on disk apart from a root inode index file. So it's just got pointers, it's just an index of what was on disk. It doesn't actually copy it to a new location. And that index takes up practically no space. It's about four kilobytes in size. So when you first take a snapshot, it basically doesn't take up any space, and it's basically instantaneous. As the active file system changes, however, blocks which would have been removed from it could be locked by a snapshot. The snapshot therefore starts to take up space over time. And again, you're going to see how this works when I do the example at the end of the lecture. The snapshot is saved in the volume that it is taken off. So if you lose the volume, you lose the snapshots of the volume too. Snapshots initially take up no space, but they do grow over time. So because of those two characteristics of snapshots, they're used for short-term convenient backups and restores. They do not replace a long-term offsite backup strategy. This is because the snapshot is saved in the actual volume that it's a snapshot of. So say that you have a fire in the building or some kind of other natural disaster and you physically lose that volume, well, you've lost all the snapshots of it as well. So for your long-term backups, they need to be saved off-site somewhere. So if you do lose the site, if you do lose the physical system, you're not going to actually lose your data. Snapshots do not give you that capability. So snapshots are not a complete backup strategy. They're used just for short-term backups. For your long-term backups, you're going to need an off-site backup, backup the data to an external location. You can use Snap Vault or you can use tape for that. Another reason that they're not a long-term backup solution is that the snapshots start to take up space over time. So if you left them there for a long time, they're going to start taking up all the space in your volume. So we don't want to do that. So typically we're going to automatically delete snapshots as they reach a certain age. So we're only going to have short-term snapshots kept in the volume. So they're not going to take up too much space. 
snapshots can be taken manually on demand. So if you knew that some changes were going to occur, you could quickly take a snapshot as a backup before those changes happened. And snapshots can also be taken automatically based on a schedule. And that's the most common way for snapshots to occur. So let's look at an example of how snapshots work. Here we have got a volume and somebody has written some data to it. It contains the blocks A, B, and C. So the active file system, that's what's in the volume right now. The AFS is blocks A, B, and C. Then we take a snapshot of the volume. That is our T0 snapshot. That locks blocks A, B, and C. So the snapshot doesn't take up any space. It just consists of pointers of what was in the active file system at the exact time that the snapshot was taken. So snapshot T0 has got pointers to blocks A, B, and C. Then a user writes more data to the volume. Block D is added to the active file system. So right now, the active file system contains blocks A, B, C, and D. The T0 snapshot, a snapshot, it's read-only, it never changes. So the T0 snapshot is always going to take, contain pointers to blocks A, B, and C. The next thing that happens is we take a T1 snapshot. Again, it's a snapshot of whatever is in the active file system right now. That is blocks A, B, C, and D. So the T1 snapshot consists of pointers to blocks A, B, C, and D. Next up, blocks A and D are deleted from the active file system and block E is created. So a user has edited the files that are in that volume. They've ended up deleting blocks A and D and creating block E. So you can see that right now the file system consists of blocks B, C, and E. The snapshots never change. So T0 is always going to contain pointers to blocks A, B, and C, and the T1 snapshot is always going to contain pointers to blocks A, B, C, and D. The next thing that happens is we take another snapshot. That is our T2 snapshot. Again, it's pointers to whatever is in the active file system right now. That is blocks B, C, and E. And then block E is deleted from the active file system. So let's look and see where we're at right now. At the point in time that we stopped with the example, Block A is locked by the T0 and the T1 snapshots. It's no longer in the active file system. Block B is locked by the T0, T1, T2, and the active file system. And block C is the same. It's locked by the T0, T1, and T2 snapshots, and also the active file system. Block D is locked just by snapshot T1, and block E is locked by the T2 snapshot. So blocks A, D, and E would be deleted if we didn't have snapshots. So there you can see that the snapshots are starting to take up space over time. When the snapshots are first taken, they're just a pointer to what is in the active file system. They don't take up any space at all. But right now, blocks A, D, and E have been deleted from the active file system. So if we didn't have any snapshots, they would be deleted and not taking up space. But because they are contained in snapshots, those blocks are not actually deleted. They're not freed up on the disk. So you can see that the snapshots are taking up the space of blocks A, D, and E. If we delete the T2 snapshot, block E will be deleted because the T2 snapshot is the only thing that is locking block E right now. And if we delete the T1 snapshot, block D will be deleted. Again, because the T1 snapshot is the only thing that's locking block D right now. If we wanted block A to be deleted, we would need to delete the T0 and the T1 snapshots because they are both locking block A. And if we deleted the T0 snapshot on its own, that would not free up any disk space because everything that is being locked by T0 is also being locked by something else as well. So you can see with this that the amount of space that is being taken up by different snapshots is kind of hard for you to see what's happening because you can have multiple snapshots which may or may not be locking the same blocks and most blocks may or may not be locked by the active file system. So to see exactly how much space 
your snapshots are taking up and how much space would be freed up if you deleted a snapshot. There are tools available such as the space really claimable command and you'll see how that works later when we do the lab demo. Thanks for watching. If you want to get hands-on practice with NetApp Storage for free on your laptop, then you can download my free ebook, which you can see above my head right now. Also check out my NetApp Storage Complete course, which will teach you everything you could possibly want to know about ONTAP. Thanks.